fight. Nice. And me and John, I mean, that's like back of hand stuff for us. We've done it for, you know, so many years on leverage. And uh, when we got done with it, and he still hadn't seen it. He goes, he goes, I go, I'm wrapped, I'm going home. He's like, well, you guys shoot the fight. And I was like, we just did. <laughs> He's like, that took like an hour. I was like, yeah. I go, well, Elliot got 30 minutes. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, that was the name of my stunt team. If, if you guys remember, it was Hurry Up and Fight. Because yeah. it'd be like Tim and Gene on the fucking couch for like an hour, just talking heads. And they would, they would film for six hours. And then they're like, 30 minutes left. It's like, we got 30 minutes to wrap. Hurry up and fight. I'm nice. Like, Come on, man. So I was so used to it. So we shot it. But, no, but the point of the story is Noah had never really seen a big fight like that. And every day for the rest of the day, he just came up and talked to me about that fight. He loves it. Yeah. It's the Christmas episode. Cool. And, um, it's not even Jake Stone. It's it's completely Elliot Spencer. I mean. yes. No, it wasn't there, man. So it was just me and Frakes and stuff. So the whole time, Frakes was shaking, going, "Is no one gonna get mad that you're doing all this?" And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Just fine. So uh, well, I, I got in a little bit of trouble with my boss. He's like, "You can't, no, you can't do that." No. <laughs> And you do a ton, I mean, you do a ton, you were talking about your stunt team, but especially starting on Leverage, you do a ton of your own stunts. Um, and I feel like that was a big thing, uh, like you said, with Elliot um, on Leverage. Uh, do you enjoy it? Is that like your, uh, a fun part of the, of the shows? I mean, my gosh, it's got to be amazing. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Steve McQueen fan, man. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Another cocktail? What are you? Oh, okay. How are you? Good to see you. Um, can you can is it can you guys hear me? Is this working? Yeah. Um, so I'm just a big Steve McQueen fan. I just yeah. always have been, and you know he did all. And and there's one stunt that Steve McQueen and you guys may not know this that he didn't do, which was a great escape when he jumped the motorcycle over the, the fence onto the thing. Right. That's a mistake if you think that he did do it. Uh -huh. He wrecked the bike. And when he wrecked the bike on the thing, the other guy did it. But Steve actually did that stunt. So Steve did all his own stunts. And you can't ever take that away from him. So it's kind of like that with me. And, and I got hurt on the last stunt of the year. And I know, you know, yeah. But, uh, but it's just a thing, man. It's like, it's like it, I, I put it, I always tell somebody this when they don't understand. Because Noah didn't understand for so long. He was all, and you know, Noah's directing. He's one of my favorite directors now. I just love working with him. You know, we work together so well at this point in our career. And, um... And he didn't understand. He was like, I'd rather much more see this in the comedy than I would rather see you do stunts. I don't know why. And I was like, because nobody does it like me. And it's like, it's, I always, and I told him this and he understand. I mean, when Tom Cruise runs, you know it's Tom Cruise running. Yeah, yeah. You can't double Tom Cruise's run. Yeah. It's kind of a weird little run. I mean, it works. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing he with fighting. You know if it's me or girl. if it's not me. And so I was just, you know, and so I you know, challenge anyone to slow down anything and try you know on leverage and try to catch catch another face in there because you won't yeah. very cool i just love it man it's an art it's a dance it is and i was hired on leverage to fight the john rogers hired me as a fighter he didn't hire me you know i'd gotten my buddy <laughs> get in trouble talking about this day age, but <laughs> clay crawford man lethal <laughs> weapon my best friend and uh that's what we did we went out on saturday nights and all these little places <laughs> Places. People yeah. <laughs> in LA that thought they could fight. Well, we went. We had one bar that we went to. It was called the Powerhouse, and we used to go in there and mop up the, you know. Yeah. We just used to fight. It was, it was a Saturday. I'm from Oklahoma. He's from Alabama. We're both wrestlers. That's what we did. Very cool. And I mean, now he's playing Martin Riggs, and I was playing Elliot Smith. He played <laughs> Quinn. I brought him in to play Quinn on Leverage. Woo! But it's like they hired me to be a fighter, and um, and surprisingly to Dean. Um, he found out that I, that I, well, I, I don't mean, this is Dean's words, he found out that I could do comedy as well and, and act as well. So, it was, uh, you know, I was just, I was, I was Mr. T. I was paid yeah. to beat people up. And, uh, and then they started writing for me and giving me more dialogue. So it was, uh, it was kind of fun. And I mean, some of you have heard this story before, but it's like, but John, you know, John was, uh, John Rogers, creator of the show. And, uh, and Dean, we were filming the pilot and there's a shot where, in the pilot, where when Hardison says, I don't even know what you do. And I say, and then I do it, and I say, that's what I do. And uh, we got done with that, and Dean, he had three cameras shooting, and Dean turned to John and goes, he goes, I don't even need to shoot it again, because it was, you know, money in the bank. That was my job. That's what I did. And John Rogers got up. Is there any kids, earmuffs? No? No. I think we're pretty good, yeah. And uh, John Rogers stood up and goes, that's why we fucking hired him. <laughs> I tell you, man, 
keep your Academy Award. That was the best award I ever got, man. Because at that moment, Dean believed in me, and at that moment, I had proved John right and made John proud. So yeah, yeah, very awesome. That's cool. I mean, some sort of some real life experience that led to what you said. I like what you said about y you can tell when Tom it's Tom Cruise running. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really enhances the character. It makes us be more with you, you know, fighting alongside with you when we know it's you. It you know does. what I mean? Doing the stuff, which yeah. is what's really awesome. It was so awesome in Leverage, and now obviously the librarians as well. Yeah, and it's important to me, man. It's important yeah. that you see my face and yeah, yeah. and even the guy that came in that shot it this year we had another camera guy and he said he said that was amazing we shot it because he was like it's so much better when the guy's in there you don't have to worry about trying to hide any faces or where your camera's at and stuff like that and i mean i gotta go back to the old the old jackie chan school of uh, of everything you know um i learned a lot from jackie just by watching him but you know if jackie's if jackie's gonna run out of a window and jump out of a window and it's funny because you'll, you probably never thought about this, but you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. If he's going to run out of a window, he doesn't just run out of a window and jump out of a window. Because the camera, say, are you people? And the window's over there. This is what Jackie does. <laughs> Jackie wants you to see his face so that you know Jackie just went oh, out that yeah, window. Yeah, nice. He's a very smart man. Yeah, I never even thought about that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, question. Are you sick of seeing this yet? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. This is helping a little, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, this is the only time I get to get out here and give you guys a hug for, for supporting me and being behind me. And, you know, some of you I've known for, for t almost 20 years, 10 years, and yeah. some of you I just got to meet. But this is my only shot that I get to give you a hug and tell you thanks for supporting me and supporting what I do. So I, don't, I never get tired of this. Well, that wasn't actually my question, but... <laughs> well, there you go. <clears throat> my question is... Now that you've been in movies, you've been on successful TV shows, do you still love to see movies? Because you talk about how you always loved movies when you were a kid, and does it ruin it a little bit? Because now you know how it's made, and you can kind of pick it apart. And what is your favorite movie, Snack? Movie S Snack. Movie Snack? snack. Yeah. Um, it, does, it doesn't ruin it for me. I don't get to go to the movies as much as I'd like to anymore, just because A, in LA, it's task. You know what I mean? It's not like we're probably somewhere some of you guys live where you can just drive down the street and go. It's like a 55 minute drive to go to, you know, and it's always packed and it's LA. Uh, in Portland, I would love to go, but we're working so much. We work in like 15 hour days, but I do rent movies a lot. So I, I stay up and up at them. And, uh, but it's weird because I'll notice continuity. Like if he cuts to a scene, if it cuts to me and I'm sitting here like that, and then it cuts back to you and then it cuts back to me and the beer's over there. I <laughs> I mean, I can tell what scenes, I can tell the cuts, and it's like, you know, so sometimes it's, uh, it's a little bit different, and, uh, and I notice stuff like that. And I'll give you just a little quick story, and it's a really fun story. Okay. Kramer versus Kramer, two of the best actors we got, oh. Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep. In Kramer versus Kramer, they get in a fight at a restaurant, and as great as Meryl Streep is, she messed up. Because the gig is, there's a flower pot here, or something, I can't remember. It's right here. And Dustin's talking to her, and he's mad, and he takes his drink, and he sets it there, and he's got to smash it against the wall, right? But he's, and so he's holding it, and he's talking to her, and he sets it down right there. And it's a really good scene. And he's, and he's talking to her, and he's talking to her, and Meryl Streep just, like, say the camera's over here, and Meryl Streep just goes. <laughs> and looks right at the camera. And when Dustin's finished with his speech, he sits his glass down here and swipes it up against the wall. So he knew what he had done, but he kept going with it. Yeah. And it's a really fun scene. And I notice little stuff like that now. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know. But, but I love going to movies. My favorite snack is just, I don't know, I'm a popcorn guy, but I don't really drink diet. I don't drink like Coke or Diet Coke or anything like that. So when I go, I get to enjoy like a Diet Coke and, like, <laughs> yeah. Coke and popcorn, Pepsi, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm simple like that. When did you uh, get the, the bug, you know, like the, when you were young? Because I know, you know, you started off in, uh, um, you know, in high school and things like that and kept going and then moved to L.A. How did that kind of co uh, go down? Well, that's a really long story. Some of you guys know it, and she kind of touched on it. You know, right, I moved, right. I went to five different elementary schools. and was always tough being the new kid and, yeah. you know, making new friends. And football was the only thing that was, that helped me out in that situation when I was young because I was freaking good at it <laughs> so I automatically was you know a football player and so that it kind of that kind of helped out but it was really tough making friends especially some of the schools I went with uh, went to in Odessa you know it's just a tough place to grow up and um, and so my best friends were the movies mom would drop me off and I'd see one and I'd see another one and right around the age of like 12 13 14 I started going I'm gonna be a bartender I'm gonna be a fighter pilot I'm gonna be you know like this and that and all this other kind of stuff and then I said Navy SEAL you know and I was like 
And then I was like, uh, man, if I was an actor, I could just do all those things. Yeah, and yeah. so I prepped early. And I never acted in high school. I've never taken an acting class like some people. It helps some people. It just never helped me. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, my second favorite quote, you learn to fight by fighting, which is Bruce Lee. Yeah, very cool. Very you can't cool. read it in a book, man. You got to do it. It must have been cool then. Um, obviously, the first first big thing you get, uh, Fame LA, you know, based off of the Fame <laughs> High School in, in LA. Like, yeah. how crazy was that? You know, to then just be playing <laughs> an actor in an actor's school and have that be your sort of, your first big kind of break. It was crazy, man. Kenny Ortega directed the first episode. I don't yeah. know if you guys know Kenny from, uh, from um, this is this is it? No, this, it was the Michael, he directed Michael Jackson right before he, Patty directed, uh, right, right. this is, uh, anyway, and High School Musical, he's responsible for. He's the he was the dance choreographer in second unit for Dirty Dancing, and all. He's a very good friend of mine, and he was so dear to me because I had never acted before. He kind of took me under his wing, and um, but it was funny. And, I, and if you, it, it, I hate to talk this much on something like that, but well, I shouldn't I shouldn't take that much time because it's a long story. But it was, <laughs> but it was fun, man. It was uh, it was a lot of uh, it was it was really from I've said it before, going from eating a can of ranch style beans every day to. Uh, yeah. To being able to sleep finally on a bed. Everyone else bought a car, I bought a bed because I didn't have one. Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, we're happy to have you here today, you know what I mean? So, congratulations. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so, uh, Lindsay and Lauren were two of my favorite characters mm -hmm. in Angel. Yep. And I loved any scene that you guys had together, especially the terribly tragic scene where your character died and I right. cried. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, you obviously both had amazing singing voices. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you had any favorite Andy Hallett stories that you could share with us. Yeah, I gotta watch myself on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that, I just get teary up. Te I tear yeah. up when I talk about Andy. He's a great guy. You know, I always hated how I died. Uh, I didn't think that Lindsay should have deserved that. I think that he should have been there for the final fight. Yeah. I think it would have been a lot cooler. But after Andy passed, it was like, I kind of loved it, you know what I mean? Because he was the one that took me out. And I remember Andy that day. Um, the thing was, is I was supposed to go to another movie <coughs> called Ultraviolet with Mila Jovovich. Oh, yeah. And I flew to Hong Kong, so I had to quit. See you, sweetheart. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, see ya. Good, goodbye. Um, and uh, so I went to do, I went to, I flew to Hong Kong and uh, got in a fight with the director and flew back the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was, I'm not going to get into that story because fuck him. And uh, <laughs> but I flew back, but I'd already died on Angel, but I flew back and said, Josh, I'm not doing the movie. And he goes, oh, and so he wrote me in for the rest of the season, but they'd already filmed my death scene. They filmed it like episode 14. And they filmed it at six in the morning with six guys to keep it quiet. Oh. And there was, one, I guess there was a mole in Joss's office that leaked it out. And yeah, so it wasn't really kept that secret. But we filmed it, the crew was getting there at eight, we showed up at six and filmed it so no one would know we were filming it because Joss wanted to keep it really you know, quiet. And, um, and I remember Al, Andy just like shaking with the gun. He didn't like guns. He didn't, he didn't want to have to do it because we were friends in real life and stuff like that. And I just remember having to talk to him. I was like, it's okay, man. It's, it's really okay. Because Josh tried to kill me five times. And I told him, <laughs> you feeling that? And uh, yeah, so, but, uh, but I, I tell you, the, the one story that I love the most was, um, it's, two, it's two reasons why, and I've told this story before, but nobody realized Andy was there. So I got into an elevator in Munich, Germany. And um, I get in, I got my guitar. I'm going to open the show at, at, uh, at Star Trek. Uh, it was a Trek thing, and I, you know, I was I was not on Star Trek, but they said come out because I had a show. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Federation, I don't know. Fedcon, it was Fedcon, and so we're there, and I get in the elevator, and I'm going to open up the show, and George Takei, Takai, I don't know, is standing in the elevator, and uh, and he looks over and goes, "Hi." Now <laughs> <laughs> it's with my buddy Jared Neiman and uh, Andy, and I go, "Oh my God." To go George, the guys are hitting on me. This is yeah. so cool. Yeah. This is so cool. Yeah. And uh, and I said, George, can I ask you a favor? I said, can you uh, can you introduce us tonight? Would you would you mind? He was like, oh, absolutely. Okay. And so George Takei, Takei, is it Takei or Takei? Takei, right? So George came out and he just goes and so he grabbed the mic. And we were getting ready to come on. We had all our guitars ready, and he was like, ladies and gentlemen, Kay. <laughs> 
best introduction I've ever had yeah. in any city That's in the awesome. world. I mean, what a legend, what a legend. And, uh, and we sang Sweet Home Alabama, and Andy came out and grabbed the mic, and Andy was singing Sweet Home Alabama, and it was all of us on stage singing it. And I just remember being in a different country, not being a, a Trek, Trek people, right. Trekkies or Trek people, and, and it was just me and him from Angel, and we just, uh, we had a blast, man. He was, uh, he had, it's too bad that his, uh, his heart didn't match how big, it just, he was such a good guy. Yeah, I miss him every day. Yeah, Thank great you. Great story, great story. Uh, how did you get that gig? How did you get that gig to open that con? We were doing another one in, uh, we were doing, we were doing, we did a barfly tour with music and we had done a con in London. And so we just jumped up into Germany and the guy said, hey, if you guys want to come out, we're not going to pay you, but you can come out and just say hi and sign autographs yeah. and stuff like that. And so we were playing Munich that night and then I think we played Frankfurt, I can't remember, but it was awesome. in Munich and so we just showed up and kind of crashed the party. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Great story. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Christian. Hi. I miss your long hair. I do too. I'm growing it out right now. That's why the hat's on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Save it and reveal it later. There might be a reason. I'm not going to say anything. All right. Oh, don't tease. No, That's don't not tease. nice. Oh, I, I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't know. Uh, so I was wondering, I'm a big leverage fan, and I was wondering, is there going to be a review? I don't know if there's going to be a reunion, you know. I don't know if I don't know if Tim would want to come back. Aldous is too expensive now. <laughs> and my man. Damn it, Harson. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I can't really talk about it. All I'll say is that me and Dean had a pretty great conversation on the last day of the library. Sweet. Yes. And I'm growing, and I'm growing my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> Becky laid away. Yes. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you hit dangerously close to something there. Good question. <laughs> That's a good answer. Dangerously yeah, that's close. It. Like Dean that. Devlin. That's right. Dangerously close. Dangerously that's close. Right. Yeah, yeah. Dean Devlin. At Dean Devlin on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, you guys. Oh, we'll, we'll get them. Start from morning. Don't get me in trouble. Though. I didn't say anything. No, I'm just no, saying, no, 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 nothing's, no, no. Nothing's happening. I'm just saying. Yeah, you guys keep on Dean about doing some leverage stuff. Wait, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> that's our job. He said when on a Twitter post. Not it. Yeah. Oh. All right. Very good. Some good detectives out there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi, Al. Hi, Christian. Hi, Al. Um. I already touched base on this before. You've done everything, literally everything. <laughs> so you said the only thing that's left is like your own island somewhere, <laughs> and that you know hopefully that y you make enough money to buy your own piece of land so nobody can bother you. Um, but is there anything else that that you did miss out on? not getting or that you do wish you could have or could get but can't because of everything going on? It's a good question. Um, you know, I think the worst part about this business, and some people have really thrived at it and I respect them, but relationships come, there are a dime a dozen in this thing, you know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. nobody stays together in this industry. It's just, and the people that do, you know, it's, it's just amazing and um, there's a lot of love there uh, and, and stuff with them but it's a tough business it's tough business to meet people and it's very tough to meet someone in the industry and it's also very to explain to you know to be in the industry with someone and it's also tough to meet someone outside the industry and stuff like that but that's not just me that's just with everybody in this business i've had numerous conversations throughout the 17 years i've been doing this with with all my friends and and sometimes just random people um I think the one thing that I didn't, but this has nothing to do with what I'm doing. I mean, I would love to have played football. I would love to have gone to the NFL. And I was good enough. I just wasn't big enough. Everybody grew like six inches and put on 50 pounds over the summer. And when you're a wrestler, you're sucking weight. You know what I mean? And so it was just like, so, but I would have loved to have had, had a shot at that, to be honest with you. But that's, that's long gone now. I'd be out of the NFL anyway, even if I could make it. But, <laughs> but, um, but uh, other than that, man, I just don't, you can't look back on stuff, man. There's no regrets. There's some things that I wish I would have done differently. And, you know, when you get Band of Brothers in one day and the same time you get Summer Catch and you yeah. pick Summer Catch, <laughs> <laughs> you may have made a mistake. Yep. <laughs> but I didn't. Tom Hanks called me home. It was, it was a role on Band of Brothers. It was only for one episode. I was in all episodes, but it was one episode that featured me. Called me home and said, thank you. We thought, you know, and I was playing, uh, 
But I took Summer Cats because it was a baseball movie. Varsity Blues had done so well. All my friends were in it, you know what I mean? And so you do stuff like that. But you can't look back on that because then I got Steven Spielberg hired me on Into the West without even auditioning, you know what I mean? So if I'd have done that, don't, I mean, maybe I would have done that. But it all came back and stuff. And you just can't look back. You just got to look forward. So, I, I, you know, I'm very fortunate to do what I do. And, um, and as, you know, as long as I can stay healthy, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. It's a good question, though. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you also say that we're the ones that made you and if it wasn't for us you wouldn't be here but you kind of created a family that's and so great you I created a, a big thing too so i think it's a two-way street thank you thank you, thank you so yeah. much yeah. Thank thank you. Was there a moment with, with the Caniacs, like, when did you first hear about the Caniacs and, and all that, and how did that kind of develop? I mean, it's obviously an awesome, thriving group of amazing fans. Um, when did you start, when did it first register, like, as a blip on your radar, um, performing and such? You know, I, it had to be through the music, I, I yeah. really honestly believe it was, but it just kind of gradually kind of took off, and it yeah. was, um, and it was something that I heard, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, man, yeah. I, like the, I like the sound of that. And then it just became a thing, man, and you know, like, back when we, started we didn't there was social media really wasn't out there we had right. we had myspace i think <laughs> yeah and i was only using that to pick up girls <laughs> so it was like yeah <laughs> but uh but we just and it just kind of came about and now it's like like i said man there's uh there's really i've seen people you know there's the <laughs> there's the believers <laughs> there's the there's the what's the guy's name from Who's Doctor Strange? Come with bitches. Benedict Cumberbatch. Why would you want to be? You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, Caniacs are just a cool name. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. And so I'm just, I'm just really fortunate. And not only that, but my people stay together. I mean, like, everybody's tried to kind of like reproduce that. That have known me and seen conventions I've been at and stuff like that, and tried to get something like that going. I didn't start it, man. They yeah. did, and it's become a family. And like I said, it's gone way past me. I'm just like. I'm just the guy on the cover. It's really, I mean, these, you know, like I said before, you guys are saving animals and saving lives, literally, and it's, uh, and it's nice to see if, like the family like that come together. And you know, that's 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 why I come to these things, man, just to show my appreciation, my honor. It's really, you know, yeah, awesome. Thank you. Hey, Christian. Um, well, since you signed my vest, you're an honorary stealer in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And Easy quick does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like a Cowboys fan or something? My, my NFL draft is tonight, so, uh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. so I'm hoping for Bell or Brown. Come on. Yes. Hey, uh, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, because you do your own stunts and you do fight, have you ever studied capoeira? 